I'm quite mindful that at the moment in school, most students are probably somewhere in the middle of their comparative studies, or they may have done two texts and have left to move on to a poet or to go back and look at some items from paper one. So I know that I had tackled Macbeth previously, and in those videos I had tackled the theme of power, I had looked at the essential images and spoken about some of the characters and the relatable elements of Macbeth. I will return to those, but I'm quite conscious that each week somebody comes to me and says, I don't know what the comparative studies is. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't know how to structure it. I don't know what I'm being asked. If any of that sounds familiar, let's get rid of that uncertainty today. Okay. Anyone who goes to my classes will know I'm a big believer in visual images. <sighs> Three green markers. They are the exact same. They colour, they mark, they're green. I have three texts. I have a book. I can read that. There's a story in it. I have a play. I can read that. There's a story in it. And I have a film. Fine, I can't read it. But there is a story in it. And I can watch it. And it follows give or take the same premise. There's no difference. Sorry, that's my cookie clock. <laughs> um, the only difference, really, if you're looking at your three texts now, is that two are written texts and one is a film. Go back to these again. Suddenly, you start to see a difference. This is quite bright. This is a rather thick highlighter. This is quite skinny. It's quite a bright highlighter, but still quite skinny. And this is darker, and it's a highlighter. What am I going to do when I look at these? I am no longer now going to say that all three are markers, all three are green. I'm going to realize that yes, they all have this in common. That's why they're all green, they're all markers, they're all in common. But this is more like a pen. It's skinnier, it's still green, but it's different. These two are my markers. So in essence, this could be your film, and this could be your two print texts. But are they completely separate? No, they're not. Because even though this is different, and these are similar, they're all still connected. And even at that, your two similar ones here are not the exact same. They're both green, but this is less of a bright shade. Therefore, if I have my three texts, positive, less positive, a little bit more negative. That is your general vision and viewpoint. That is how you look at your texts. Your three modes of comparison are theme or issue, general vision and viewpoint, and literary genre. Until the mocks, I will not cover literary genre, and I personally don't think a school should cover all three before the mocks, because certainly the way I teach it, there are headings involved. There is a particular structure, and each one has its own flow. I don't think it's quite fair to expect a student to understand all three before the mocks, learn them off, together with four or five of their poets, to put them in a strong position going in. So for that reason, I will only cover theme or issue and general vision and viewpoint for the moment. So this evening, I'm going to take a very quick glance at what general vision and viewpoint is and how you start breaking that down for your texts. So, do you like the world you live in? a question I would ask you to think about. Is there great positivity in your world or is it filled with negativity? I know straight away if I'm going to rely on perhaps larger news channels 
I'm going to see what the media will want me to see, the big stories. I'm going to see child molesting, I'm going to see terrorism, I'm going to see money embezzlement, Brexit, tax evasion, negative, negative, negative. A body chopped up in the woods somewhere, somebody's buried somewhere else. These are all really awful things that we would think, we would wish would never happen to us in a million years, but they do. But they're not the only things that happen. You've also got the great acts of kindness that never make it to our eyes. Somebody brings milk into a neighbour in the height of a storm because she lives on her own. Somebody helps somebody across the street. Somebody helps their brother or sister with their homework. There are little acts of kindness that suddenly redeem our world. But that doesn't mean it's all nice either. So what you need to do when you think about your world is to systematically break it down. How does it open? If you're reading a book or looking at your world, what are you thinking of straight away? Where did everything begin? Was it positive or negative? If you think of your day today, how did that start? Did you open your eyes and suddenly see that your window had fallen out or that a hole had been blown in your wall? Or did you wake up to a cup of tea and orange juice and family fun and enjoyment and bickering over the breakfast table? That's all a lovely positive start to your day. So how your opening began really sets the tone for what the rest of the day will be like to follow. That's exactly what happens when you look at text one. What was the opening like? Was it positive or negative? Did my characters treat each other in a particular way at the opening? Did that give me a hint on what these people would soon be capable of? Did it give me a hint that this was going to be an uplifting or a negative view of human life? The closing. What's the end of somebody's life like? What do you think will happen the day you die? Do you hope that you will have accomplished everything you ever set out to? Do you hope that you've left no trail of regrets? And if you have, that they're pleasant regrets, that maybe you're glad you left some questions unanswered? Or will you have hurt so many people that you have changed lives for the worse? Have you inflicted pain on others repeatedly? All of these things help to show the ending of somebody's life. How did they live their lives? What choices did they make? How did they help them to get to this ending? Again, back to your texts. The closing. What is the closing of your text like? Is it positive or negative? Are your characters' issues resolved to a satisfactory conclusion? Have your characters learned something? And has there been a character satisfaction, a character resolution? Has your main character fulfilled their purpose, whatever that may be? Does it end on a positive, uplifting note, full of optimism and life? If it hasn't, what does the author want you to understand? If you live your life in a certain way, is it destined to end in positivity or negativity? And that's where the vision and viewpoint of your author is going to come into place. They make your characters interact in a certain way. They make these things happen, these events unfold, all to give you that learning curve at the very end where you realise that to live your life a certain way and to make decisions in a certain way will result in a certain kind of conclusion. Opening, positive, negative, why? Conclusion, positive, negative, why? What happens in the middle? your vision and view of humanity. Are people capable of great good or great evil? And where can we see that? If you're going to look at any of your texts, you look at the actions, the relationships, the events, you look at what kind of things that people prioritize in that world. Do they prioritize children? Do they prioritize money and self-advancement? Whatever that is, that gives you an idea of the kind of humanity that's taking place in this text. Look at your own world. Do you think you're surrounded by money-hungry, greedy people? 
Or do you think you're surrounded by people who put the welfare and education of children first, the safety of others, the happiness of others? It's up to you. Everybody lives in a different version of this world. Just like everyone is going to see a different view of the text that you're studying. It's a very, very personal answer. So stop and think. My opening, my closing, my vision and view of humanity. The author allowed your characters to prioritize certain things. And you can see that through the selfishness or the generosity of their actions. Do they prioritize money and reputation? Do they prioritize a patriarchal society where men lead? Or is it gender equal? What's important and how do people treat one another? That all helps to form the general vision and viewpoint as put forward by the author in your text for the view of humanity. And the final one is life and human relationships. Are the relationships in this text positive or are they negative? If they're positive, what characteristics does each character have in order to make that relationship so successful? Is it based on equality? Is it based on mutual understanding? Is it based on love? All of the good qualities, surely, your author wants you to understand that for a relationship to be successful, there are certain components that must be there to make those pieces fit together. But what if it's negative? What if the relationships in your text are predominantly negative? Is it because one or more of your characters is essentially flawed? Are they dishonest? Do they fail to communicate? Are they disloyal? Are they angry? Are they unkind? There must be something in their very makeup that encourages the breakdown and disintegration and ultimate failure of this relationship. And again, look at your author. They want you to understand something about the human condition, about the way humans are. It's impossible for you to be married to somebody who hits you. It's impossible for you to be married to somebody who treats you as an inferior person every single day and for that relationship to still survive and be healthy. Because there is a flaw, a fundamental flaw in that relationship and that makes for a toxic society, that makes for a society that tolerates this and it makes for an ultimate negative vision and view of human relationships. So the name on your mode is the general vision and viewpoint. Opening, was that positive or negative? View of humanity, was that positive or negative? View of human relationships, was that positive or negative? And conclusion or closing, was that positive or negative? This can be positive, this can be negative, positive, positive. Generally, that's a positive vision and viewpoint as put forward by the author and interpreted by you. That's it. That's all there is. So what I need you to do now, if you have been in any way unsure about what the general vision and viewpoint actually is, is I need you to take one page for text one, one page for text two, and one page for text three. I want you to put down four headings, opening, closing, view of humanity, and view of life and human relationships, and I want you to document positive or negative. If it's positive, where can I see it and who's involved? You don't need to know your comparative studies in as much depth and detail as you need to know Macbeth or your single text. That is why you literally need to know who is involved, what was the key moment or the turning point or the important moment that took place to show this? How can I personally engage with it? How do I feel about it? How did it impact me? Does that reflect on my world whatsoever? And bang, you move on to your next heading. Text, text, text. Four headings, positive, negative, 
why, who's involved, where, personally engage. That's it for now. For this video, I really want you to get into your head what the general vision and viewpoint is and think about it. It is a vision. It's a viewpoint. How do I view the world? Reading a book, whose viewpoint is it written from? Do they influence whether I feel something is positive or negative? How is it all presented to me? And most importantly, stop and think. How am I interpreting this? How am I absorbing this? I must have an opinion. I have them every day of the week about everything else. I must have them about this. My characters are flawed. What does the author want me to get from that? What do they want me to think? Anybody who goes off and does this exercise and really wants to know whether they're on the right track or not, please send me a WhatsApp. Um, if you need to know my number, just drop me a message on Facebook or you can send me a picture on Facebook or you can post it on the page. Drop me a comment here. I don't mind what it is as long as you are actively working and actively trying to self-critique by finding out, am I on the right track or not? It is almost Christmas. So, yes, it's exciting, but also we are a step closer to 2019, which means you need to get your act together if you're not sure what some of the comparative modes are, because we need to get started on that. All right? Thank you.